Um, thank you, Richard and Lynn, for joining us. Um, for people who don't know, my name is Tina Choi. I'm the CEO of Chervande, and I'm working with Bruce to put these community days together for you guys. And we're so happy to have uh, Richard Halt and Lynn um, to come on to present fall preventions and medication related fall prevention. And I'm so excited. Let me do a very, very brief introduction. So Richard uh, is the current chairman of community relations in the Peninsula Pharmacists Association, responsible for pursuing activities that serve the communities of Santa Clara and San Mateo County. And then Lynn is a community pharmacist, birth cer certified in ambulatory care pharmacy and currently really enjoying her new role as a stay at home mom. And then she's also a board member of the Peninsula Pharmacists Association. And she hosts uh, these education events for healthcare providers. And like Richard, she loves to be in touch with her community. So the floor is all yours, Richard and Lynn. Okay. All right, thank you, Tina. So I will start. Uh, we're, so good morning, everyone. We are here today to talk to you about medicine related falls and fall prevention in older adults. Have you ever wondered whether any of the medicines that you take might increase your risk of having a fall? So today's talk will focus on medicines as a contributor to falls for several reasons. First, medicines are among the most common causes of falls and one of the easiest to change. And medicine-based risks might be missed by busy doctors, especially now during this pandemic. And as pharmacists, we know a thing or two about medicines and their effects. Now I would like to cite a few statistics to show that falls can be serious. One out of five falls causes a serious injury. Falling once doubles your chance for falling again. Each year, about 250,000 older people are hospitalized with hip fractures and three fourths of those are women. And falls can lead to a loss of confidence, a loss of mobility, and the ability to live independently. And even as we see in this next slide, falls can be deadly. This graph is from the CDC, and it shows the death rate from falls in the United States from 2007 to 2016 for older adults increased 30%. Now, if this rate continues to rise, and we know that it has continued to rise, uh, we have statistics now going up through 2018, that we can anticipate seven fall deaths occurring every hour by the year 2030. In our, presentation, in our presentation today, we're going to be going over a couple of typical examples of seniors who have had one or more falls. Here is our first example, and Lynn will present Janice's story. Thank you, Richard. So we have patient case number one. Janice lives alone with her dog, Fifi, in her home. She has two grandkids who visit often. Her house is full of toys, throw rugs, and clutter. A week ago, Janice fell in her home. Luckily, her daughter was around. Now Janice is worried she might fall again. So towards the end of the, this presentation, you'll be asked to type your suggestions in the chat box or just uh, voice your suggestions about what you think Janice can do to improve her living situation to prevent future falls. Now let's think about what may be contributing to her fall. I'm going to turn this over to Richard again to go over risk factors for fall. Okay, thank you, Lynn. 
<clears throat> risk factors for falls are either preventable or not. Preventable ones include poor foot care. Um, examples might be a decreased sensation in the feet from diabetes or conditions such as bunions, plantar fasciitis, or ingrown toenails. Household hazards are a contributor to falls. Uh, things like throw rugs, extension cords, and clutter. Poor vision. Poor balance, which may be due to conditions such as Parkinson's disease or stroke. And consider the use and abuse of alcohol. Limited mobility, which may be due to one's living situation, as we have seen with Janice, or from muscle weakness that can occur due to a decrease in exercise and physical exertion as we age. And of course, medicines. And by the way, taking five or more medicines a day is a preventable risk factor for falls in seniors. Unpreventable ones include female gender, as I have mentioned, and then medical conditions such as arthritis, stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, Parkinson's disease, heart disease, and dementia. Listed here are some of the common side effects that have been linked to falls in seniors. And I would like you to consider these to be an overview of side effects that are exhibited by all of the medicine groups today that we will go over. Uh, side effects such as vision changes, drowsiness, confusion and impaired memory, hallucinations, uh, unsteadiness and impaired balance, low blood pressure on standing from a sitting position. This is also known as orthostatic or postural hypotension and nighttime urinary frequency. If you experience any of these, please share them with your doctor or pharmacist. Oops. Okay, um, these are the medicine groups that are that uh, are have been most linked to falls in seniors. Those that treat anxiety, those use sleep aids those to treat psychiatric conditions, medicines that treat depression, those that lower blood pressure, medicines to treat diabetes, and a group of medicines known as anticholinergics. Now these are the medicine groups that you, your pharmacist or doctor should be looking for when uh, you review medicines as part of fall prevention. I believe I skipped over a slide and I don't think it's, there's a way to go back. It's a patient case number two and I can help you go over that. If... Uh, let's see. Yeah. Can you go back, Lynn? Let me, to... let me try. No, I can't. You can, huh? Should we just go? Hmm. Uh, are you controlling the screen? So, um, sorry for this technical glitch. Oh, we can go back. Let me try to go back. Okay. Okay, well, one more. Okay, right. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Okay, so this is our second example of a senior who has had multiple falls. Marcus, has a history of stroke and high blood pressure for which he has to take lots of different medicines. For his blood pressure, he takes clonidine, brand name Catapress. 
amlodipine or norovast, and furosemide or Lasix. To help him sleep at night, he takes a drug called Zolpidum, brand named Ambien. He fell three different times this past week. Recently, his doctor prescribed a couple of new medicines for him to take. Oxybutanin, brand name Ditropan, to treat overactive bladder and urinary incontinence. And amitriptyline, brand name Elevil, an antidepressant to treat nerve pain that's associated with arthritis in his lower back lower back. So I'd like you to be thinking about what may be contributing to Marcus's falls and what can be done to decrease his risk for falling again. And we'll be reviewing this again in a later slide. And so be thinking about your answers to these questions. Uh, we'll ask you to uh, put your answers in the chat box and then we'll go over them. Okay, now I've already gone over these groups of medicines that are most linked to falls in seniors. And now the first group of medicines that we would like to review in detail are those that affect the brain directly. And the first group in this category are those that are used to help people sleep or to treat anxiety. And some examples include lorazepam, brand name Ativan, diazepam or Valium, and alprazolam or Xanax, all of which belong to a group of medicines known as the benzodiazepines. And this group of medicines are known to cause drowsiness, confusion, hallucinations, uh, memory loss, and they affect balance. Here are some additional medicines that have been used to help people sleep. Some examples include Zolpidum, brand named Ambien, and this is one of the medicines that uh, Marcus was taking, Zaliplon or Sonata, and Ezopiclone or Lunesta. Now these so-called Z drugs have been linked to uh, sleepwalking, and they may affect, affect next day alertness, and they may affect balance as well. Uh, and now Lynn will continue with our presentation. Thank you, Richard. So we have another class of, anti, uh, of uh, medications called antipsychotics. A lot of antipsychotics can increase your fall risk. I'm referring to medications that treat schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and other psychosis. Sometimes they're also used to control difficult or harmful behaviors in adults with dementias. Examples include risperidone or risperidol, quetiapine or seroquel, and olanzapine or cyprexa. These medications can mainly cause drowsiness, confusion, and orthostatic hypertension. So they can increase your fall risk. That's why it's very important to be careful with these medications. Before continuing, I'd like to share with you that I have two of my family members who uh, had a fall accident in the past year. One of them, uh, actually both of them got hospitalized and one of them being my mom in her 70s um, after she started a new medication. So as a pharmacist, it's very important for me to help you understand your fall risk, um, especially due to medications, because I don't want you to fall. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we have another class of medication called antidepressants. And they can increase your fall risk because they cause drowsiness, blurred vision, and again, orthostatic hypotension. Besides depression, they also are used to treat anxiety and nerve pain. Sometimes I um, have my patients ask me at the pharmacy, uh, can I take this at a lower dose? And I think that's a really good question 
and it's also my takeaway for you here. Um, when it comes to drugs that affect your brain, like those we went over for anxiety, sleep, pain, and depression, every now and then it's a good idea to ask, do you still need the drug? Sometimes you may need to start on something new, like to get you through a hard time. And if you still need to take the drug, ask um, if you can take them at a lower dose. So lower doses can have less side effects and less drug interactions. But it's very important for you to include your doctors in the conversation about whether or not you can stop or reduce your dose. All right, moving on. We have medications that treat blood pressure that can increase your fall risks in older adults. So if you are on diuretics or water pills, uh, for example, to treat your blood pressure, like hydrochlorothiazide and furosemide, and you take them in the evening, you can find yourself going to the bathroom more often at nighttime, making it more likely for you to trip and fall in the dark. So um, it's a good idea to take it earlier in the day instead of at nighttime. Also, it makes more sense for you to take it in the daytime because they can be used to treat edema or swelling of your feet. Um, so that, you know, that happens more often when you're out and about and being active. Um, also keep in mind that diuretics uh, or water pills can cause orthostatic hypertension. So be careful when you're standing up from a sitting position or lying down position. Okay, and then we have anti-diabetics that can increase fall risks. And then these um, medications include insulin and glyburide. And because they can lower your blood sugar too much, they can cause dizziness, shakiness, blurred vision, and confusion. So it's important for you to monitor your blood sugar on a regular basis. Okay, and then we have anticholinergics that can increase your fall risk as well. These drugs include antihistamines, like you've heard Benadryl or diphenhydramine, certain antidepressants such as amitriptyline, and medications to control overactive bladder, such as oxybutynin. And you may recall our patient case, Mr. Marcus, who recently started on these two anticholinergic drugs. So side effects he may be experiencing include dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and confusion. But when you have two or more of these anticholinergics interacting with each other, you can even experience more severe outcomes like delirium and falls. So what should you do if you or someone you know is taking any of these medications that are linked to falls. You can ask your pharmacist and our doctor to go over your list of medications and they may decide to discontinue the drug when it's appropriate, switch to another drug or formulation that is safer, or they can reduce your dose. Again, it's very important for you to you know, include your uh, healthcare provider in making decisions about your drug regimen changes. What else can you do to minimize your fall risk? Besides reviewing your med lists with your pharmacist or doctor on a yearly basis, you want to have regular vision and hearing checkups. and just take it easy around the house. So for example, you don't wanna get, get up too quickly from your bed. In fact, take a moment to get oriented before you stand up. And keeping your body and mind engaged by doing certain exercises to improve your strength, balance, and flexibility. Because you're less likely to fall when you have strong hip and leg muscles. And doing Tai Chi can help with your balance. And for better flexibility, you can stretch, do stretching exercises. And 
believe it or not, during this pandemic, there are lots of videos on YouTube that can teach you um, balance, strength, and flexibility exercises specifically for older adults. And you can do these exercises in your own space. So preventing falls involve multiple strategies. Keeping your home safe is another way to prevent falls. So be thinking about Janice's case and your case at home. Which of these interventions can she or you use to prevent falls? Adding certain safety features in your bathroom like grab bars and rubber tub mats making sure your home is well lit and clutter free, wearing non-skid shoes or socks that have rubbery uh, tractions. I know those fluffy, uh, fluffy slippers are cute and comfy, but they can, you, you can slip in them. And avoid climbing stools and step ladders. And if you like to take walks around the neighborhood like I do, you can actually call the city to have them fix the um, you know, sidewalk cracks and uneven surfaces for free. All right, these are just some more examples that you can do to make your home safer. All right, let's go back to our patient case. What can Janice do to make her home safer and prevent future falls? I, I'll give you a minute or two to make some suggestions, either in the chat box or you can just um, verbalize. And we'll go over this together in a moment. Whoops. And I'll go back to that previous slide. <laughs> this is your cheat sheet. <laughs> Okay, so I see um, one, one uh, person uh, suggested clear the rooms of clutter. And then another suggestion was electrical cords. Yeah, so, so you want to avoid putting electrical cords across pathways. Yes, thank you, Miss Yolanda. And don't have throw rugs in her home. Buy the bundle that wraps the, oh, that's a great idea. So you can buy the bundle that wraps the electrical cords? Yes. But yeah, so Lynn, I actually uh, bought something that actually wrapped a lot. You know, you have your iPad, your iPhone, everything is all over the place. You can actually yeah. have a string that wraps it. So it'd be nicely tucked in the back. That's a great idea. Because I trip on those myself. Yeah. And it looks nicer when they're like nice and neat together. <laughs> Thank you. So Lynn, there is a question on the chat. Uh, I think Jane asked, what about OTC sleep aids like Tylenol and PM? That's a great question. So when you see um, brand names that have the word PM behind it, that usually means the, there's a, an active ingredient called uh, diphenhydramine or Benadryl. And um, as I mentioned before, that's an in ingredient that can cause anticholinergic side effects like you know, drowsiness, blurred vision, um, confusion. So you generally want to avoid um, the PMs uh, because it can cause those side effects and can increase your fall. So if you need something for pain, I would prefer you to take um, just a separate ingredient for pain, which is Tylenol or acetaminophen. Jane, does that answer your question? And if you have any questions for us or me later, I'll give you an e uh, my email address um, and you are welcome to reach out to me. If I can clarify anything for you, I'd be happy to. Okay, so um, these are great solutions. Um, the other question was, how can I get a copy of this presentation? 
and we will have a recording, right, Tina? Yes, we have a recording. Yep. Yep. So we can disperse this out for free. Okay, so let's go over their solutions together. Um, so Janice can use skid free rugs or carpet tape to secure her rugs. She can remind her grandkids to put away her toys or their toys. <laughs> And then making sure that her pets are in the fenced area so she doesn't trip over a running dog. And lastly, she can participate in balance and strengthen the exercises. So we'd like for you to look at your own space and think about how you can improve your own situation to prevent falls. And I will turn this over to Richard's patient, patient case. Okay, thank you, Lynn. So Marcus, do you remember his story? He's had multiple falls. Uh, he has a history of stroke and high blood pressure. And he takes lots of medicines. Recently, his doctor prescribed a couple of new medicines for him to take. It was the ditropan, which may cause confusion, uh, drowsiness, blurred vision, uh, memory loss, and Elevil, a drug which may cause confusion, blurred vision, drowsiness, uh, problems with him sleeping at night, and also it might cause him to get up at night to empty his bladder. So what, what do you think may be contributing to Marcus's falls? And then what do you think he can do to decrease his risk for having more falls? So again, I'll give you a minute or two to come up with a couple of suggestions or more in put, uh, using the chat box and then uh, we'll go over them. So let's see. Somebody has the hand raised. Jane, do you have a question? Oh, okay. yes, I do. Um, I understand what you said about Tylenol PM. Um, if I'm taking something not so much primarily for pain, but help me to stay asleep, is melatonin a better alternative <laughs> to taking one of those PM drugs, over over the counter drugs? Jane, that's a great question. If I can answer, I help you um, understand this question. Um, this is Lynn. That's a um, very good question again. So the PM is not as good in the long run for helping you with insomnia or hard time sleeping. And that's because um, the PM component or diphenhydramine component can wear out its effect to mm. help with sleep. Usually mm -hmm. you take this uh, over like uh, more than five, seven days. It doesn't work anymore for sleep. So melatonin is a good alternative and you can take this as needed in the longer run. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's to know. Yeah. And, you know, you can have like a Benadryl free period to help you gain that um, like short term uh, effective uh, for sleep later on, but yeah, keep in mind that it doesn't work um, after uh, a week, I say, and then, and also you want to, um, it has more side effects too, uh, more than melatonin. Okay. You can Thank double you. check with your doctor and pharmacist to make sure that it doesn't interact with your, um, any of your medications for melatonin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any question? Okay. Um, well, it looks like Yolanda and Janice got it correct, uh, and, uh, and so did Tina. <laughs> uh, so 
you guys, you, you said that you think that he should have a medicine review with his doctor. I would add also his pharmacist could be involved. Uh, and that's basically correct. As far as what's contributing to his more recent falls, it's most likely the two new medicines that his doctor prescribed, uh, the, the Alavil and the Ditropan. And as for what he can do to reduce his falls, you came up with the correct answer. He should talk to his pharmacist or doctor uh, to do a medicine review. So uh, what I would like you, to, uh, one other thing, he might consider uh, an exercise program that might benefit him to improve his strength and balance. But I uh, would like for all of you to look at your own medicines and ask your pharmacist or doctor to do a medicine review. So this is just a reminder to stay safe out there and try not to spend all your money on medicines. Here's a list of the references we use to, to develop this presentation. And that, that concludes our presentation. We do have a link uh, to a, a brief survey that we would like you to fill out to help us improve our presentation. And uh, uh, the link will be put in the chat box. You could just click on it and it should take you to that survey. Uh, we promise not to collect any personal information from you. And so we appreciate your attention. And with that, I'll open the floor up to any further questions you might have. And again, uh, after we leave, you can uh, still contact uh, Lynn at her email address or the Peninsula Pharmacist email address at peninsularph at gmail.com. Richard, will you put that link on the chat now? Sure, well, let's yeah. see. How do I? Uh, or uh, Lynn? See, how do I do that? <laughs> I can type it really quickly for you guys right now. Just type Great. it in. And then we also have a quick polling. If you can just click on this um, for to help us bring the right information to the audience. Hey, Tina. Yes. If I do it, I guess it becomes skewed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said if I do the the, the session, uh, the whole thing becomes what's the word skewed? No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, well, I have for everything. So I think this is great because I I never thought about medicine and just falling. Just never thought yeah. about that. I have another question. Yes. Um, I noticed what you said about the dog. Uh, about keeping the dog in a fence type area. So, you, but I'm, I'm thinking about getting another pet. I haven't had one in a long time. Do you, mm. do you necessarily think that that's a bad idea for an older person because of this issue? Question. I don't think so. I would weigh the risks and benefits of having a pet. I feel personally that having a pet can increase your, enhance your well-being. Um, and, you know, especially during this pandemic when we're so isolated from each other, I feel like having a companion next to us would make us feel overall, you know, happier and healthier. So it's good to, um, you know, also keep in mind though that I'm, maybe, maybe uh, certain pets are better for us because, um, so you want to maybe consider their personalities if they're, you know, really hyper and active, like Jack Russell Terrier that I have. Um, <laughs> you, you may want to avoid that kind of, um, you know, energy, uh, energetic pets, um, and go for some some someone who's more calmer and yeah, <laughs> and then you have yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I would like to get another cat, but I don't want a kitten because they're too frisky and all over the place. I think that would be worse. Yeah. Get, 
a cat that was a little older and more settled. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. Yeah, I'm getting tired of talking to myself, so. <laughs> you could get, get a caterpillar and then it will turn into a butterfly. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. You know, they're quiet. Oh, Jake, can I order one of those on Amazon? <laughs> actually, uh, you can, actually. I don't know if Amazon has them, but uh, there is an organization that you can. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, I used to have a silkworm and they would make, you know, silk for silk for you. <laughs> That's cool. I never thought about that. <laughs> Super. Thank you so much. Um, hey, Tina, are you still here? I am here. Okay. Any other okay. questions? Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Richard. Great presentation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having us. Take care, guys. All right, awkward si pause of silence. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, John, is that you? I finally made it. <laughs> oh, good. We're getting on the, to the sessions for some reason. I don't know why. I'll tell you, I'll tell you in the next one about the jazz musician you missed. Doo hoo Oh, darn it all. We have a all recording right. of that, John, uh, oh, yeah, on our website. Right. We feature them on the website, so you can take a look at the video. You'll love it. You will love it. Okay. Tina? Tina? Yes. How, how do I get a copy of that presentation? Uh, I'll, you know what? I'm not sure if they want to send us the preso, but once we edit this, we'll send this over to you. It, or we'll, okay. we'll put it on feature. We'll put it on our feature video, since this one is an important topic. Do you have... Do you have my email address? I do. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you are Thank getting you. the community Zoom um, email, right? From us? Yes. Okay, great. So we'll send that out. And okay. you can always travel on our website. Yeah. We'll feature, we'll definitely feature this one. Uh, where? Yeah. And I, Yolanda, I, you. Yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just wanted to tell you because um, you asked about like chair yoga. So um, we oh. have. Uh, plans to add that in the community Zoom day or on other days. So be on the lookout on the Trivande website. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, guys. The, so the All next right. one, make sure the guided meditation is actually from, uh, we have a new partnership with Daily City. They will be helping us with some contents too. Great. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.